You're watching Yoga with AJ. I'm AJ. Welcome to episode 2 where I'll be teaching you Surya Namaskar. And along with your Surya Namaskar, you will learn the triangle pose, the three-pointed pose, Trikon Asan. And then we're going to strengthen our stomachs, open up the hamstrings. The hamstrings are a very important group of muscles. They can lead to lower back pain and stiffness in the hips. So we're going to have them nice and loose and easy. You're going to need a belt for that. So keep a belt or a rope or any kind of cord handy with you. And we'll end with a lovely Shavasan, the corpse pose. It may sound strange, a lovely corpse pose, but trust me, when you do it, you're going to feel just wonderful. So let's get started. So we're going to start with Surya Namaskar today, but before we do that, let's loosen up the shoulders and the neck a little bit. Let's come into a nice hip distance width posture, and the way to measure that is use your foot against the other and just step away. So one foot distance. Gently pull up the abdomen, straighten out the back, press the shoulders down into their sockets, lift your chin up, elongate the spine. Take a deep breath in, stretch your arms up, relax the shoulders down into their sockets again, pulling up from the kneecaps as you're doing this. You're standing up now while stretching up, rooting down into the floor with your feet and your toes. Gently bring the arms down. Let's wake up the neck now. We're going to do a head roll to the right first. Starting with the chin coming into the chest, tilting to the right, tilting back as far back as you can go, coming to the left and back down again. Repeat on the right, tilt to the right, look up, tilt to the left and down. Reversing, going to the left this time, looking up, stretching to the right and down. One more time to the left, left and back and right, come to the center. Inhale deeply, come back up, interlock your fingers behind you and stretch up to the ceiling, pressing your fingers and your shoulder blades down. Stretch up to the sky with your chin. Take two deep breaths here and release. We're going to stretch out the sides of the body, the shoulders. So step your legs a little bit wider, bring your right hand to your left shoulder and just bring your left hand behind. If you can go all the way around your waist, loop your hand around your waist and now twist towards your left side. Try and look behind you as if you have a friend calling out to you. Come back to the center. Switch hands, twist over the other side. As you're twisting, don't let your back compromise. Twist as much as your back allows you, come back to the center. One more time to the left, come back to the center. Stretch with your other arm. Looking over your right shoulder, stretching with your left arm. And gently relax your body. So we're ready to do the Surya Namaskar. The Surya Namaskar is a series of 12 movements or 12 postures, 12 asanas. So you start with your legs together, moving through 12 postures. And the first time I do it, I'm just going to flow through the movement. So I'd like you to watch. First watch, and then we'll do it together, step by step, a couple of times. And eventually, I'm going to help, help you flow through it with breath. So I'll be giving a breathing instruction. However, if you find it very difficult to follow the breathing instruction along with the movement, just ignore the breath instructions and go with the flow. So starting out at the head of your mat with your legs together. Try and get the inner thighs, the inner knees, the inner ankle bones pressed against each other. You're in Tarasan like we were last time. The back is straight, stomach pulled up, the kneecaps pulled up. You're going to come into this position to start and now just watch. So that was the Surya Namaskar on the right leg. We do it once on the right, once on the left. And that's one full round of Surya Namaskar. So let's do it together, slowly, and then we'll go a little faster. So like I said before, come to Tadasan, straighten up your legs, press down into the floor, have the inner thighs, knees, and ankles touching each other, pull up the abdominal muscles, lengthen your back, press the shoulders down. Stretch your hands up and come first 
to Namaskar Mudra. Center yourself. Stretch your arms up. Gently arch back. As you exhale, we're going to reach forward and down. And if you need to, bend your knees to get your palms down onto the mat. Your hands are just resting on the outsides of both your feet. If you can't get your palms down on the floor, maybe you have just your fingertips down on the floor. Now we move to Ashwasan Chalan, the equestrian pose. Step your right leg back as much as you can. Some of you might be just here, and that's fine. And those of us who have more openness in the hips, we're going to really stretch that right leg back and rest the right knee down on the floor. Stretch the toes out behind you. Press the fingertips or the palms down and look up. Gently press the palms down. Curl the right toe under. Pick up the right knee. Your body is in a nice straight line. You're going to move into that plank or push-up like position by sliding the left leg back. Nice, strong stomach, body in a straight line, neck, open shoulders, back and hips all in one line. Now gently bring the knees down. Bring your chest down between your hands, keeping the hips up and the elbows tucked into the body and rest your chin down on the mat. Inhale and gently slide forward. Elbows are tucked in. Bent. You're going to try and look up if you can. Stretch your toes out on the mat behind you. Press the palms down into the floor. From here, we're going to go into an inverted V-like pose. But if you want, you can go back up into a kneeling position first and then climb up. Alternatively, you could be on the floor, scooping forward and going straight up into the inverted V. Whatever feels good to you. Coming back to the equestrian pose from this inverted V, you can either step one leg forward, bring the left knee down, so your right leg is stepping forward, the left knee is on the floor, and then you can use your hand to press the heel forward, bringing it in line and then stretching the left leg back, wherever it might be, back in equestrian pose. Or, if you have the openness in your leg, coming back from inverted V, just swing your leg forward between your hands and then gently place your left knee down onto the mat. Look up. You're in equestrian pose again. You can try and have your palms down if they allow you. Gently curl your left toes under. Pick up the left knee. Take a giant step forward with your left leg. Now you can either have your knees bent here, fingertips just touching the floor. Gently draw your head in towards your body. Or if your legs allow you, you can straighten up the legs and press the palms down. Gently draw the head into the knees. From here, we're going to reach forward. If your knees are bent, again, reaching forward, trying to come to a tabletop position, reaching to the other end of the room, gently coming up, arching back softly and bringing the arms down by the side once more. So that was the flowing movement of the Surya Namaskar. If you noticed, I only did it on one side, my right leg, but we'll be doing it on both, first the right leg and then the left. And that's one full round. We'll be doing it much slower, maybe taking breaks in between. So it might not be a flowing movement in the first round when we do it. But the next time we do it, we'll be doing it a little faster. And then one more time with the breath. So let's try standing in Tadasan first. Keeping your back absolutely straight, pressing down, grounding down into the floor with your feet. Pick up your toes, spread them out wide, press down into the floor. Pull up your stomach muscles, your abdominal muscles. Take a deep breath in, roll your shoulders down your back. Lift up your chin, bring it parallel to the floor. Bring your hands to prayer position. Center yourself. Press down through your shoulders, down through your heels. Pull up from the sides of your body. Bring your arms up. Gently arching back from the upper back. Reach forward to the other end of the room and then down. If you need to bend your knees as you bring your hands next to your feet, fingers and toes in one line, and then gently draw your forehead and your chin in towards your body. If you can do this with straight legs, you can attempt it with straight legs, making sure you're not feeling uncomfortable there. Moving into equestrian pose, Ashwa Sanchalanasan, like we did last time, step the right leg back and gently press the hips down into the floor. You could be on your fingertips, or you could bring one palm down if you feel comfortable there. Press the other palm down if that feels good. And look up towards the ceiling. 
gently curl the right toes in, pick up the right knee, bring your body into a nice straight line through your right leg and just slide your left leg back to plank or push up position. You're looking a little ahead of your fingers on the mat, neck, back, hip all in one line, heels pressing into an imaginary wall. Now gently bring your knees down, rest your knees on the floor, curl your toes under. Keep your hips up and gently bring your chest down between your hands, rest your chin on the mat. The elbows are tucked in and bent. Inhale deeply and slide forward and up. Stretch your toes out behind you now. Press down with your palms, elbows bent, tucked into the body, looking up. You're quite low, you don't need to be high here. Press the tops of your feet down into the floor. Now curl your toes under. Either come first onto your knees or from the floor. You could go straight up and then stretch up into this inverted V pose. Stay here for a few seconds, stretching out the backs of your legs. If you feel your hamstrings complaining or your lower back complaining, you can keep your knees slightly bent here. Moving back into Ashwasanchalan, the equestrian pose. Stretching your right foot forward, either take two steps, bring your right foot forward, rest the left knee down and press forward with your right hand onto your right ankle stretching back into the equestrian pose or from this inverted V you could simply swing your right foot forward pick it up bring it between both hands if your hips and your back allow you rest your left knee down stretch the left toe out behind you either stay up on your fingertips or come down onto your palms whatever feels good stretch up towards the ceiling with your upper body moving out of equestrian pose curl the toes out there on your left foot Pick up the left knee and take a giant step forward with your left foot, bring it in line with the right. Gently draw your head in towards the knees. You can have your knees bent at this point, whatever feels good to you. If you can press your palms down into the floor, do that or stay up on your fingertips. Gently bring your head in towards the knees. Coming out of there, coming back up towards a standing position, gently stretch your arms forward reaching to the other corner of the room as you come up arching back gently at the very top and bringing your arms down by your sides so that was Surya Namaskar on the right leg let's try it again on the left come back to your prayer position center yourself press down into the floor gently stretch up arching back reach forward and down like a table reaching forward Bend your knees if you need to, press the palms down on the floor, fingers and toes in one line, draw the head in towards the knees, stretch the left leg back to Ashwa Sanchalan, press the palms down, stretch the toe out behind you on your left leg, look up, pressing both hips down towards the floor while stretching the upper body up towards the sky. Now curl the toes under on your left leg and pick up the left knee, body in a nice straight line, press down into your palms and slide the right leg back to a nice push-up position. Try and have your feet together. Your feet are curled under, your toes are curled under. Stomach pulled in, body in a straight line, looking a little ahead of your fingers on the mat. Rest the knees on your mat, keep the toes curled under. Release the chest down between your hands while keeping the hips up. Bring the chin down onto the mat. Slide forward and up. Slide your toes out behind you. Elbows tucked in, bent into the body, looking up. Now curl your toes under. We either go up onto our knees or straight up into an inverted V. Gently bring your left foot forward, either taking two steps or straight away from there, one long step. Bring the right knee down onto the mat, stretch the right toe out behind you. Either press the fingertips or the palms down, look up towards the sky. Curl the right toe under. Pick up the right knee, take a giant step forward with your right leg. Gently draw your head in towards your knees. Relax your shoulders. Breathing here for a few seconds. You can have bent knees here if you want. Stretch up towards the ceiling. Gently arching back. As you exhale, bring your arms down by your side. Let's try that a little bit faster with the breath. If the breathing instruction confuses you, you feel like it's too much happening at the same time, 
I'm having to think about my movement and the breath. You can ignore the breathing instruction and just go with the flow, whatever feels right to you. So starting out in Tadasan, root down into the floor with your feet, straighten up your back, take a deep breath in, inhale, as you exhale, come to prayer position. Inhale and stretch up, gently arch back. Exhale, reach forward and down, bring your palms down onto the mat, bend your knees if you need to. Inhale, stretch the right leg back and look up. Hold the breath, retain the breath, slide the left leg back to push up position. As you exhale, knees, chest and chin down on the mat. Inhale, slide forward and up. You're in this cobra-like pose, pressing the toes down. As you exhale, curl your toes under, stretch up into inverted V. Inhale, bring your right foot forward between your hands. Take two steps if you need to. Stretch up towards the sky. Exhale, curl your toes under, pick up the left leg, step it forward, bend your knees if you need to. Inhale, stretch forward and up, gently arch back at the top. Exhale, bring your arms down by your side. Inhale, as you exhale, come to prayer position. Inhale and stretch up. Exhale, reach forward and down. Inhale, left leg back. Look up. Retain the breath, right leg back, push up position. Exhale, knees, chest and chin down. Inhale, slide forward and up. Exhale, curl your toes under. Inverted V. Press your shoulders up away from your ears. Inhale, bring the left foot forward between your hands. Take two steps if you need to. Look up, press down with your hips. As you exhale, bring the right foot forward. To meet the left, draw the head in towards the knees. Inhale, reach forward and up. Gently arch back at the top. Exhale, bring your arms down by your side. Let's go a little faster. Inhale, exhale, palms together. Inhale and stretch up. Exhale, reach forward and down. Inhale, right leg back, look up. Retain the breath, left leg back. Exhale, knees, chest and chin down on the floor. Inhale, slide up. Exhale, curl your toes under, press your hips up. Inhale, bring the right foot forward between the hands, look up. As you exhale, bring the left foot forward, draw the head into the knees. Inhale, stretch up and gently arch back. Exhale, bring your arms by your side. Inhale, exhale, bring your palms together. Inhale and stretch up. Exhale, reach forward and down, palms on the mat. Inhale, left leg back and look up. Retain the breath, right leg back. Exhale, knees, chest and chin down on the floor. Inhale, slide forward and up. Exhale, inverted V. Inhale, left foot forward between the hands, look up. Exhale, bring the right foot forward, draw your head in. Inhale, stretch forward and up, gently arch back. Exhale, bring your arms down by your side. Separate your feet hip width apart. You can measure it out with your foot. Straighten out your back. Gently close your eyes and just watch your breath for a few seconds. Draw your feet back in together. And step your leg out into a nice wide straddle pose about four feet apart. So we're going to try the triangle now. Trikonasan, three-pointed pose. You're going to start out by turning your right foot out to the right. Watch the alignment of your foot. The heel of the right foot, arch of the left foot are completely aligned. And the toes of your left foot can be slightly turned in. Now as you do that, your left hip will come up. Push down into your left hip, all the way down into your heel. Straighten up your back. Stretch your arms out to the side. Stretch your upper body up. Pull up gently through your stomach. Your right leg is completely turned out from the hip. Both the legs are going to stay absolutely straight as you reach out to your side. And gently float the hand down to your leg, wherever it allows you. Your right arm is resting on your right leg. Your left arm is going to gently come up. And if your neck allows you, look up towards your left hand. If you can go lower, go lower down your leg. Hold on to your ankle. Keep looking up towards your hand. 
staying here for three breaths more. Gently look down at your foot. Float your arms up and come back to your starting position. Draw the toes forward. Make sure both the toes are aligned. Press down with your legs down into the floor. So when we're doing the triangle, I'd like you to pretend you have a glass wall in front of you and another glass wall behind you. So you can look through it, but you can't bend forward and you can't bend back. You can only bend sideways. And in order to do that, we need to open up the ribs. So your ribs open up, especially the bottom rib towards the side. Remember, it's not important how far you go down your leg. It's important how much you open up and stretch the side of your body. Let's try the same pose on the left side. Stretch your left foot out towards the left. Turn the right toe in slightly. And press down from your right hip down into your right heel all the way. Equalize both the hips. Your left leg is completely turned out from the hip. Remember, both the legs will stay absolutely straight as you're doing this. Straighten your arms out to the side. Take a deep breath in. As you exhale, reach out to the side first. Gently come down towards your leg and then stretch the right arm up. Both the arms are in one line through the heart. If your neck feels nice and open, comfortable there, you can look up at your hand or you can continue to look to the side. Open up both the hands. Your palm is facing away from the front of your body. Staying here for three breaths more. And look down at your foot. Float your hands up. Come back to the starting position. Drop your arms down and fold both your feet forward. So we're going to try the same pose, going to the side, keeping both the toes facing the front this time. Again, your legs are absolutely straight. And this time, since neither hip is turned out, there is no way for your legs or your hips to move out of place. You're standing a nice, perhaps four, five feet apart. Just bring your right hand down to your right leg and keep sliding down, keeping the ribs open. Bring your leg nice and straight, bring your arm as low as you can and then stretch your left arm up, open up the chest. This time you bring the left arm down towards the left ear and if your neck allows you, look up towards the ceiling. Remember, if you can't go very low down your leg, that spine too can be higher up and stretching up higher. You don't have to go all the way down. Coming back up, let's try the same thing on the other side. Sliding down your left leg, keeping both legs nice and straight, opening up the ribs, stretching the right arm up this time and down towards your right ear. Look up towards the ceiling if your neck allows you. Gently bring the arm up, come back up. So we're going to combine what we did the first time with the legs and the second time with the arms. Keep your legs nice and wide. Turn your right leg out to the right side. The right leg is turned out. Press down through the left leg. Equalize your hips. Stretch your arms out to the side. Reach out to the side. And float your arm down wherever it allows you. If you want to stay higher up, you can stay higher up. Stretch your left arm up. And now bring it in towards the left ear. If your neck allows you, look up towards the ceiling. Hold this position for about five long breaths. If you're doing it the right way, allowing yourself to stay in a place where you feel comfortable. Coming out of it, relax, trying the same thing on the other side. Turn the left foot out. Remember, check your alignment again. The left heel and the arch of the right foot need to be aligned. You can bring the right toes in slightly. Press down from the right hip into the right heel. Stretch out both your hips, make them even. Straighten out your arms, reach to the side. Float your arm down, stretch your right arm up and bring it down towards your right ear. Gently come up. Relax your arms. Straighten up both your feet. As you're doing this stretch towards the side, you can imagine that the leg that you're stretching towards is pulling up into the hip joint. Both the hips stacked one on top of each other as you're bending. That will make it much easier to stretch. And if you need to, have a yoga block or a yoga brick next to you so you can support yourself on it if required so coming back feet together shaking your legs out so we're going to continue with some seated and reclining postures on the floor now you're going to need your belt any cord or belt will do to stretch out your hamstrings even further so we're down on the floor now stretching out the hamstrings 
The last time we stretched out the hamstrings and the back of the body, we did Paschimottanasana, seated forward bend. Just to remind you, this is the Paschimottanasana, seated forward bend with the help of a belt. This time we're going to do an asymmetrical pose, stretching one leg at a time. So for some of us, this might prove easier. Because it's an asymmetrical pose, one leg is bent in and the other leg is straight. What can tend to happen is that the hip might go out of alignment. So you might be facing the corner of the room instead of facing right in front of you. So have a look at your hips, see that they align both sit bones down on the floor. And if that's not possible with your foot way up your leg, you can just gently slide the leg down next to the knee or even against the calf. So take the belt into your hand, loop it around the base of your big toe, around the side of your little toe, and just at first starting to stretch out the back of the leg. So at this point your right leg is bent in, left leg is straight, and we're just stretching out the back of the leg. The back of the knee is straightening up. The heel might come off the floor as you keep stretching hard. As you keep stretching forward along your belt, stretch up towards the ceiling, stretch out the back. Straighten out the back from the base of the spine. And then when you're ready, reach forward with your head. If you're very flexible, you might want to loop your hands around your foot and stretch forward again with your chin, straightening out the back behind you. And if you're even more flexible, reach forward, try and bring the chest down towards the leg. So we're in Janu Shirshasan. Janu is knee, Shirsha is a head. We're trying to bring the knee and the head close to each other. Staying here for a few seconds, wherever that is, you might still be holding on to your belt and reaching forward, relaxing your shoulders as much as you can, relaxing the arms. Your arms are going to work if you're using the belt, so that's natural. And if you're feeling more flexible, reach forward and down, staying here for a few seconds, stretching out your left leg first. Don't compromise the stretch of the back of your knee in order to reach further forward. Make sure your leg is straight at all times. Don't let the knee come up in order to bend forward. Let it be nice and straight, stretching, and the upper back, the lower back, stretching up and forward. Relaxing your shoulders and the elbows. And then try to bring the head down to the knee if it's possible. Otherwise, just hang out wherever your body feels comfortable. Staying here for three more breaths. And gently come back up. Shake out both your legs. Switch legs. Bending the left leg this time. Stretching out the right. Once more, make sure both your hips are pointing in the same direction. Reach forward with your belt. First, just stretch the leg out. Feeling that stretch at the back of your knee. Starting with a gentle stretch and then increasing the pressure to try and bring the heel off the mat. Feeling the back of your leg really stretching well. Reaching forward, as far forward as you can with your lower back. Remember when you're bending, when you're bending forward in any forward bend, whether you're seated or standing up, you're bending from the hip. So it's all the muscles close to the hip and if you're feeling any pain in your lower back at this point, any strain, just ease off and stretch less. Continue to keep stretching forward and if you're feeling more flexible, you can let go of the belt Loop your hands around your foot or hold on to your big toe or to your ankle and stretch further forward. Reaching up with your chin first and then forward with the crown of your head. Trying to bring your head down towards your knee, bringing your upper body down towards your knee. So breathing there for three more breaths, relaxing the shoulders, relaxing the elbows. And gently come back up, release your left leg shake them out. <coughs> so we've done a lovely forward bend and we're coming on to our stomach to do a backward bend. First coming to Makarasan crocodile pose to release the lower back. Make a pillow with your hands, turn your cheek to one side, let the big toes touch, let the heels flop out to either side, relax the shoulders and the chest, close your eyes for a few seconds and just breathe nicely and freely. Every time you inhale, feel your abdomen pressing into the floor. Gently take a deep breath in, 
bring your hands underneath your shoulders or you can have them even just outside your shoulders draw the heels in together now toes together legs together forehead on the mat we're going into bhujangasan cobra pose it's a low cobra inhale and press up pressing your palms down into the floor keeping the elbows bent tucked into the body stretching up with your chest and then eventually bringing your chin up towards the ceiling we're going to hold here for about 10 seconds and gently lower your upper body back down bring your forehead down to the mat so we'll do that one more time press the heels together the upper part of your feet down into the floor your hands are underneath or just outside your shoulders take a deep breath in press up with your upper body look up towards the ceiling holding here for about 10 seconds keep breathing don't stop breathing stretch the tops of your feet down into the floor behind and gently release the pose make a pillow with your hands turn your cheek to the other side let the big toes touch come back to the crocodile makarasan and gently come back to the center draw your elbows underneath your shoulders Press the heels together and just look straight ahead. This is a wonderful back stretch to be in if the cobra feels like too much for you. So instead of doing the cobra, you can be in this pose, stretching out your chest, your shoulders up towards the sky. You shouldn't be feeling any pinching in your lower back at this point. And gently coming down, resting one more time. Just rest for a few seconds till your breathing comes back to normal. Then draw your hands underneath your shoulders and push back onto your heels. So we're sitting back on our heels once more and we need to release the lower back because we've been stretching it quite a bit. So we're going to go into child's pose. The Sanskrit name for it is Shashankasan, which is actually rabbit pose. So we're going to be close to the ground like a rabbit. Your big toes are touching each other. The heels are out to either side. So you've made a nice seat for yourself here in Vajrasana. For child's pose, you're going to reach forward and try and bring your forehead down onto the mat. Rest your hands next to your feet, elbows next to your knees and just allow your lower back to release. You're getting your hips come down onto your heels. Staying here for about 10 seconds, breathing deeply, relaxing the shoulders, relaxing the neck. and gently coming back up this time we're going to lie down on our back and work our stomach very important part of our body a lot of people feel their stomachs are a lot bigger than they should be what we're aiming for is just a nice strong stomach so you're going to get your legs together your hands are going to support your lower back so just bring your hands underneath the lower back or underneath the hip, wherever your hands feel comfortable. If your shoulders tense up, try and relax them and adjust your hands. Once you have your hands neatly under your back, straighten up the legs. I'm just going to try leg raises one leg at a time first to test out how flexible your hamstrings are feeling today. So we've stretched them out already. You're going to raise your right leg, try and keep it as straight as possible. See if you can get it to 90 degrees. If not, you can bring it to 60 or even lower. Wherever you feel, it's nice and straight. Test out the left leg. See where it feels comfortable. Press the heel up towards the ceiling. Gently bring the leg down. Let's try that with breath now. Let's try it again. Inhale and bring the right leg up. As you exhale, bring it back down. Inhale, bring the left leg up gently bring it down we're going to try both legs together now you're going to need to activate and use the lower part of your abdomen to do this don't let your lower back arch press it down towards the floor supported firmly by your hands and if you feel pressure even then in your lower back while doing this exercise you can bend your knees slightly as you do it so we're going to do 10 of them inhale deeply bringing both legs up make sure your hips are on the floor Exhale, bring both legs down towards the floor. Inhale and bring them up. Remember, if you can't bring them to 90 degrees, you can bring them lower. 
as you exhale bring them down inhale coming up three exhale and down inhale up four exhale nice long exhalation coming down inhale up five exhale and down inhale six exhale down remember you can bend your knees if they are feeling stressed and your lower back is feeling stressed inhale coming back eight exhale and down inhale nine exhale down last one inhale bring the legs up try and bring them to 90 degrees try and straighten up the legs hold your legs there for 10 counts 10 9 8 relax your shoulders relax your face 6 5 4 3 2 1 gently lower the legs release your arms from under your legs separate your feet slightly rest for a moment let your breathing come back to normal Whew. and releasing your lower back now hug your right knee into your chest hug your left knee into your chest just stay here for a few seconds releasing your lower back and while you're there if you feel like massaging your hips and the back the lower back especially you can gently rock from side to side if you want or draw circles small circles with your knee in one direction and then maybe you can reverse the direction go the other way hug the knee in tight and release the legs so we're going to come into shavasana now your legs are three to four feet apart toes falling away from each other the hips are relaxed the hips are open your hands are away from your body your hands are about six to eight inches away from you and when you turn the palms up this open up opens up the shoulder blades and allows your back to rest onto the floor make sure your back is on the floor just your clothing if you want to gently move your head from one side to the other trying to bring your ears down towards the floor opening up your neck massaging the joints of the neck and the back take a few deep breaths allow your body to start cooling down bring your awareness to your feet the toes the ankles the soles of the feet the arches the tops of the feet let your back belong to the floor telling your back now I'm relaxing my back allow your body to feel limp or heavy or grounded moving your awareness through your chest and your stomach now allowing these parts of your body to relax relaxing the shoulders the upper arm elbow forearm the wrist the hands the palms and the backs of the hands the knuckles fingers and the thumbs telling your arms I am relaxing my arms and now bringing your awareness to your face the muscles around your eyes around your nose your mouth your cheeks around the ears the temples and the forehead even letting the scalp relax just focusing on your breath allowing your abdomen to move very freely just allowing yourself to rest in Shavasana corpse pose so that was today's class I hope it helped you connect with yourself again we learned the Surya Namaskar today and did a few poses to strengthen the trunk of the body moving to the side reaching forward and bending back in next time's class we'll be doing twisting poses a few standing poses and a few on the mat again thank you for spending your time and your energy with me you're watching yoga with AJ